So as anyone who follows my streams on Twitch knows, Hunt Showdown is one of my all-time favorite games. I love the setting, I love the gunplay, I love the match structure, and I love the S tier, S plus tier sound design. But one aspect I didn't fully appreciate until after I had several hundred hours in the game are the fine differences between the weapons. Sure, you could just say uppercut best pistol GG easy and be done with it, but I don't know about you, but I'm not godlike enough at this game to be able to buy a shiny new uppercut every time I get a new hunter without going bankrupt. Sometimes you just won't be able to buy the most ideal loadout in the game, and sometimes you want to synergize with your teammates, or you just want to try something other than the Mosin for a change. So I wanted to start a series to give an in-depth look to each type of weapon you can use in Hunt Showdown, starting with this first video that goes over everything you have unlocked at rank 1, so whether you're brand new to the game or you're thinking about prestiging, hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a firm grasp on what equipment you have available to buy and what their strengths and weaknesses are. Note that I'll be comparing these weapons as starter weapons, not in comparison to all other weapons in the game. Before we get started properly, I want to quickly mention how damage and range are measured. Each weapon has their own damage stats, but the one I'll be referring to as a baseline will be the damage done to an enemy hunter that has hit in the upper torso at 10 meters, or just a hit in the upper torso in the case of melee weapons. The farther out the target is from the weapon, the less damage the bullet will do, although how steep the drop off is and at what range varies between ammo types. I'm not going to go in depth here, I just want to make sure you know that this weapon deals 149 damage does not mean you will deal the same amount at all ranges against all enemies or hitting any body part. When I refer to a weapon's range, or effective range, that means the range at which a hunter can be killed in one hit from the weapon, which is usually a headshot, although shotguns and other powerful weapons might one hit kill from an upper torso shot. Melee weapons and tools form the backbone of the Hunt Showdown experience. Shooting grunts may be fun and all, but it's noisy and it costs ammo. So in most circumstances, you'll want to kill AI enemies with melee attacks. You always want to carry some kind of melee weapon or tool, and they all have their merits. Well, most of them. At rank 1, you have access to two tools and one medium slot weapon. The knife, the dusters, and the combat axe. The knife is pretty capable in most situations. A light attack does a quick swipe for 52 damage, and a heavy attack is a stab in the center of the screen for 105 damage. You can manage 5 light or 4 heavy attacks before running out of stamina, so approach large hordes of enemies with caution. A heavy attack to the head will kill grunts, hives, and hounds. 3 heavy attacks will stun lock and kill an armored, 4 for the concertina variant, and against emulators, um, uh, you're, better, you're better off just shooting them or using blunt damage from dusters or the stock of a rifle or shotgun. Against hunters, this tool is decent, especially for the fact that the heavy attack is a stab that can be aimed with precision. A headshot will one-hit KO a hunter, but you could easily need a second stab if you hit them anywhere else. At $20, the knife offers good value, being acceptable at PvP, and effective at dealing with most of the AI opponents you will come across. The dusters are a good choice if you have a blade on one of your primary weapons, like to wade through oceans of grunts, or just really don't like dealing with emulators. They deal blunt damage, 31 on a light punch and 72 on a heavy punch. They are very stamina efficient, a full stamina bar will get you 20 light attacks or 10 heavy ones. While you could one-shot grunts with a heavy blow to the chest with a knife, you can't with dusters, so make sure to go for the heads. One heavy attack to the head can dispatch a hive still, and three headshots can take down an immolator without exploding him. Armoreds take an extra heavy hit to the head, which isn't that big of a deal, but concertina variants take two more which will leave you wounded and bleeding heavily, so I really can't recommend using dusters against them. Hounds also need an extra heavy hit, which can become troublesome if you are up against a large enough pack. So I realized after recording this that you can still one-shot hounds if you hit them in the head, but they move really fast, and it isn't always easy to do that, while a knife will kill with a body shot. 
Uh, okay, that's it. Uh, thank you. Finally, Hunters aren't Dusters Forte, since the damage isn't as high as the knife and doesn't apply bleeding. There's also a shorter range on the just past the tip of your knuckles than the blade of the knife. If you're in a pinch, they can work, but they're easily the weakest PvP melee item in the entire game. While not as generally effective as the knife, dusters are also a bit cheaper at $15. Until you unlock more tools and weapons, I recommend bringing both, along with a medkit for your first three tool slots. Since then, all your bases will be covered, and you can work on unlocking the other tools in their line, like the throwing knives and the knuckle knife. The astute among you will realize that we still have one tool slot left after the two melee tools in the medkit, which you must always bring. Unfortunately, the two tools available in the store at rank 1 are pretty weak sauce. The spyglass lets you see further away more clearly, but since the scope isn't attached to anything useful, like, like I don't know, a, a gun, you can't really do much with it beyond that. I've never found much use for it personally, so it seems like a waste of $8. The electric lamp does have some practical use, especially if you have difficulty seeing in dark spaces like inside some boss lairs, but the downside it poses is pretty glaring. Unless you really don't like fighting inside boss lairs because of how dark it is, save the $5 and just grab whatever extra tool you get from recruiting random hunters. The combat axe is your first melee weapon and you bring it because you don't want to go looking for a melee weapon at the boss lair. Assuming there even is one, Scrap Beak. It's slow, it's clunky, and it will destroy anything you swing it at with intense rending damage. A light melee attack does 165 damage, and a heavy attack does a whopping 330. You can manage 6 light attacks or 3 heavy attacks before running out of stamina, but those attacks are not quick. You can one-shot grunts, hives, and dogs with a light attack, and a regular armored and immolators with one heavy, although the immolator will also burn away about 30 points of health and set anything nearby on fire, so it's generally not recommended. Concertina armored only take two heavy swings, which will still cause you to bleed, but not as badly as anything else you have at rank 1. A light attack can kill a hunter if you hit them in the chest or head, but a heavy will guarantee a kill basically no matter where you hit them. If you time your swing right, a light attack can hit multiple enemies at once, which is always nice. The main pros of the combat axe are its high damage per attack, very low cost at $5, and its convenience for taking down bosses without having to scrounge for other heavy melee weapons. The cons are its slow wind-up animations, steep stamina costs, and taking up a medium weapon slot, which severely limits what other weapons you can bring with you, especially at rank 1. So you know how I said that the combat axe is your first melee weapon? That is because you are probably not going to bring the machete. It is another option as a melee weapon at rank 1, and while not as potent as the combat axe in terms of raw damage, it takes up a small slot instead of a medium one, allowing you to bring a large weapon as well. It deals 95 damage on a light and 135 on a heavy. It's decently stamina efficient, managing 10 lights or 5 heavies before depleting all of your stamina. A light attack to the head can dispatch grunts, hives, and hounds, although as discussed, it's a lot easier to hit the hound's bodies, which requires a heavy. Armoreds take 2 heavies and a light, while concertina ones take 3 heavies and a light. If you must know, it takes 3 heavies to kill an immolator, but seriously, just, just don't do it. As for hunters, you still need to hit them in the head to one-shot them, like the knife or the dusters, but the main difference here for all of these enemies is that the heavy attack for the machete is a sideways swipe instead of a jab in the center of the screen, which makes the machete a little harder to aim accurately at small targets like heads. If you must fight a hunter with a machete, I recommend spamming light attacks rather than trying to land a headshot with a heavy. 
While the machete does have a purpose at rank 1 being a middleweight option between the melee tool and the combat axe which allows you to bring a large weapon, I'm still pretty down on it because there are no unlocks in its path, meaning getting XP on it won't unlock any other weapons for you further down the line, and its slightly increased utility versus AI is not worth the weapon slot it takes up, especially considering how it handles rather poorly. If, however, you just like the way that the machete handles, despite my protests, my advice is to use the knife a lot until you've unlocked the heavy knife, which is basically the same thing, except it fits in a tool slot. The pros of the machete are its low stamina cost and smaller size compared to the axe. The cons are rough handling, poor PvP capabilities, and inability to bring a sidearm. At rank 1, you have two rifles unlocked, the Winfield M1873C and the Springfield 1866. The Winfield, or Winnie as it's commonly called, is based on the Winchester Model 1873 rifle, a lever-action repeating rifle that fires compact rounds with a relatively high rate of fire. The C model, available at rank 1, has a 7 round internal magazine, plus 1 round in the chamber, with up to 28 additional rounds carried for a total of 36 bullets. At 50 rounds per minute, Winnie's are one of the fastest large slot weapons in the game, while also having one of the lowest damages at 110 and a range of 95 meters. This low damage coupled with using compact rounds means that you can only shoot through very thin wooden walls, and even then only when very close. On the other hand, the rifle is very lightweight, making it so the sway when aiming down sights is the lowest out of any rifle. The reload mechanic for Winnie's is a 7 round magazine with extra space for another bullet after levering the weapon. What this means is that when you reload, you don't put bullets directly into the firing chamber, but into the internal magazine, and once you are done reloading, if the chamber is empty, your character will lever around into the chamber. This is why you have space for one more round in the gun when you first load into the game. In gameplay terms, this means that you can top off the Winnie really easily and efficiently, and can interrupt your reload with no penalty. There are two things to take note of here, however. Firstly, if you reload the Winfield from empty, your character will only put in up to the 7 rounds that will fill up the magazine, and once the reload is finished or interrupted, you then lever a bullet into the chamber. Secondly, the same thing will occur if you reload immediately after firing before you lever the next round into the chamber. You'll only top off until you've reached the 7 rounds in the magazine and then lever. This is crucial because in a tense firefight, the second it takes to reload that round in may be the difference maker. In order to avoid getting caught by this, try to top off before you reach empty, and take care to wait until after the lever animation, after firing, before topping off. The main pros of the Winnie C are the high ammo count, high rate of fire, and very low sway. The cons are poor penetration power and damage, relatively high cost for rank 1 at $41, and poor range compared to other rifles of its size. The Springfield 1866 is based on the rifle of the same name, a single-shot breech-loading rifle that uses medium rounds, of which you can carry up to 25. With no internal magazine, the only bullet that fits in the gun is the one in the chamber, meaning you need to take a two-second reload between each shot. Better suited to long-range fights, the Springfield, or Springy, deals 132 damage per shot with an effective range of 212 meters. It has relatively low sway and middling penetration power, since it uses medium ammo. Worth noting is the very large firing hammer, which obscures vision when aiming down sights, so try to avoid staring down sights for too long to maintain awareness of your surroundings. The Springfield reload is as simple as it gets. Reloading replaces the spent casing with one bullet through the breach near the top of the grip. Note that you can skip the animation where you cock the hammer back by reloading while hip aiming directly after firing. The pros of the Springy are low sway, low price at $38, and good range. The cons are poor performance at short range, a slow rate of fire, and a large hammer obscuring vision while aiming down sights.
The Romero 77 is not based on any one specific weapon from this era, as break action shotguns were plentiful and not especially unique. However, the name of the gun comes from filmmaker George A. Romero, who pioneered the modern zombie genre with Dawn of the Dead and other films. As the only shotgun available at rank 1, it is the ideal choice for anyone who wants to play up close and personal. The Romero comes with one shell in the chamber and 12 in reserve. With 200 damage, it has the power to stop a hunter dead in their tracks at out to 15 meters. With a 3 second reload time between shots, however, you will likely need to switch to your sidearm if confronted with multiple hunters at once. Much like the Springfield, the Romero reload replaces the spent shell with a fresh one. No fancy mechanics to worry about. The pros of the Romero are very low cost at $34, and high damage and penetration at close range. The cons are slow rate of fire and very short range. I mean, I mean, it's a shotgun, I don't know what you expect. There are two pistols available at rank 1, the Nagant M1895 and the Scottfield Model 3. The Nagant is based on the Russian pistol of the same name, a single action revolver with a slow reload and low damage, but 7 compact rounds in the drum and 21 in reserve. With 91 damage per round and a range of 73 meters, I generally find this a cheap but unimpressive weapon. As with most revolvers, reloading takes time, and interrupting a reload will mean that you will enter a spin the drum animation before you can fire your revolver again. To avoid this, try to reload only when you have time to reload fully, about 2-3 to three seconds per bullet in this gun's case. The only real pros of the Nagant are its low price of $24 and its high compact ammo reserve. Its cons are its slow reload speed and low damage and range. The Scottfield, or Scotty, is based on the Schofield variant of the Smith & Wesson Model 3 revolver. Utilizing 6 rounds of medium ammo in the drum, and 12 more in reserve, it is generally better than the Nagant in almost every category, dealing 107 damage and effective to a range of 85 meters. However, while it retains damage out to a farther distance than the Nagant, it has a slower muzzle velocity. Muzzle velocity is the speed at which the bullet travels through the air, meaning that you have to lead your shots more on a moving target the slower your muzzle velocity is. Since the Scottfield is a break-apart revolver, there is no spin-the-drum animation when interrupting a reload. Additionally, reloading it from empty allows all the empty casings to be ejected at once, which decreases reload time from empty to a scant 9 seconds. Therefore, it is encouraged to try and reload this weapon after all the rounds have been fired for maximum efficiency. The pros of the Scotty are decent damage and range for a small slot, and quick reload from empty. The main con is a steep price at $77, the most expensive weapon at rank 1 by far. Of course, I would be remiss to not compare how these two pistols perform when dual wielded. Dual wielding pistols increases the speed at which you can fire, as well as doubling your ammo reserve, but it increases the size of the slot taken up from small to medium, and removes the ability to aim down the sights of the pistol, instead merely tightening the spread of the hip-fired pistols. The Nagant's lower kick allows two Nagants to be fired with accuracy more quickly, and for two more shots since the drum holds an extra bullet compared to the Scottfield. But lower damage means it is more likely to need three or even four hits to land before getting a kill on a hunter at mid-range, depending on where the bullets land. Whereas the Dually Scotties would need only two or three in most cases. While both of these pistols mostly keep their respective reload mechanics while dual wielding, Dually Scottfields don't benefit from any time saved when reloading from empty. The animation is different, but it takes just as long per bullet to reload as when topping off. If you're dead set on using dualies, I would recommend the Nagant here actually, since you would only need $48 for a nearly equitable experience compared to the $154 you would need to buy two Scottfields. And that's it, that's all the weapons and gear that you can use at rank- wait. <sighs> the weak vitality shot is a consumable that restores 75 health after a 3 second animation on use. Oh, and the weak antidote shot makes you immune to poison for 10 minutes and removes any poison status that you currently have. 
And that's it. That's all the weapons and gear that you can use at rank 1. Later, I'll be going more in depth on these weapons and all their variants as compared to the entire Hunt Showdown arsenal. If you found this helpful, be sure to leave a like and a comment asking about a specific gun you want to know more about, and subscribe to see more of these videos in the future. You can also find my stream info and other socials in the description. Have a pleasant lack of day.